As someone who only wears lat, I feel obligated to watch the new Netflix show Wednesday. The Adams Family live the way I want to live, with people avoiding me. But one day, I might reach my goal. This series is about Wednesday. The show starts with Wednesday almost murdering an entire swimming team for bullying her brother. Her reasoning? She's the only one allowed to bully her brother. Anyone who has never heard of the Adams Family and just clicked on this, it's on the front page of Netflix currently, will be traumatised because that is the first scene. <laughs> Understandably, she gets expelled from the school after one of the boys loses a testicle. She is lucky she did not get arrested. The Adams Family then have to send Wednesday to a new school. They send her to the boarding school where her parents met, called Nevermore Academy, run by Morticia's old roommate, Principal Weems. Wednesday gets roomed with a preppy, fun-loving girl. You might as well call her Saturday. That was an awful joke. I regretted it as soon as I said it. Her actual name is Enid. Enid gives Wednesday a tour of the school. And as you can see, Wednesday is thrilled. Wednesday doesn't seem to care. The next day, Wednesday challenges a girl called Bianca to a fencing match. Wednesday loses. After she leaves the nurse's office, a gargoyle falls from the sky and almost crushes her until a guy called Xavier saves her in the nick of time. In the nurse's office, he reveals that him and Wednesday have met for at a funeral and Wednesday saved him from being cremated. You know, normal childhood memories. Next day, Wednesday is taken to her mandatory therapy session and Wednesday sneaks out the window into the town. She meets a guy in a coffee shop called Tyler who was a normie. After fixing the coffee machine at the shop, Tyler agrees to drive her out of town. Wednesday hatches a plan with Enid, Tyler and Fing. Fing is the severed hand the Adams family sent to watch over Wednesday while she was at Nevermore. Whilst escaping, Wednesday bumps into Rowan, a boy in her class, and she gets a vision of him painfully dying. She tries to stop it from happening, but Rowan attacks her, telling her she is a girl from prophecy that his mum drew and that he has to kill Wednesday because it's his destiny. Apparently no one told Destiny that and Rowan is then immediately killed by a monster. That's just episode one. So far, Jenna Ortega, who plays Wednesday, is doing an excellent job. I was curious how they would modernise the Adams. It makes sense that she would reject social media, but she would be a hit on Tumblr. Episode two. No one believes Wednesday when she talks about Rowan being murdered. The sheriff thinks she made it all up and it doesn't help her case when the boy she's saying she saw get murdered walks into the principal's office, alive and well. Wednesday is then told she has to join a club. She goes to both the archery club and the beekeeping club. At the beekeeping club, she meets Eugene, then reveals that she has sabotaged Enid's and stay decides to join Enid's team to spite Bianca. During the race, she has another vision and sees a blonde version of herself that tells her she is a key. A key to what? We do not know. In episode three, the school is having an outreach day in the town. Whilst in town, Wednesday bumps into Xavier and he tells her that the other person in the prophecy is the founder of Jericho, Joseph Crackstone. Wednesday ends up working at Pilgrim World, a tourist attraction in Jericho. Wednesday discovers a meeting house in a picture from 400 years ago and it has Goody Adams, the blonde girl from her visions. She goes to the meeting house and she is followed by the monster. Enid has a date with this guy called Ajax but he doesn't make it to the date because he accidentally turns himself to stone after seeing his own reflection. I feel like that's a design flaw for you to be able to turn yourself to stone. Embarrassing, personally. Episode four. Wednesday breaks in to the morgue to get a copy of the victim's file where she learns that each victim has had something surgically removed such as a kidney or a toe. The sheriff and the coroner show up. The coroner announces that he's going to retire so you know he's going to die. That's how these things work. In a TV show or movie, if someone says, oh, I'm gonna be retiring soon, they die within a week. Wednesday discovers that Xavier is drawing pictures of the monster. Wednesday also makes a murder wall in the beekeeping room and Eugene from beekeeping that he recognizes the location in one of Xavier's drawings. When they get to the location, they find chains and the monster's tooth. Later that day, there is a dance called the Raven Dance. Tyler and Wednesday go to the dance together. Eugene decides to go back to the monster's cave alone. He gets attacked after seeing someone blow it up. He does have die at a young age energy. Episode five, parents weekend. The Adams are back in town and surprise, Eugene did not die, but he is in a coma. But that's better than dead, I guess. Gomez gets arrested for stabbing this guy called Garrett Gate. Turns out he didn't stab him. Morticia stabbed him and Gomez took the fall for it. Shocking information was revealed that Garrett Gate was trying to poison the entirety of Nevermore Academy, but then the poison poisoned Garrett Gate and the mayor covered it up. 
so they got Gomez free. And who wants to guess the cherry on top? The whole reason they brought up this 30 year old murder is because the coroner died. Who called it? I did. People never retire in TV shows, they die. Morticia gives Wednesday her yearbook. After looking through it, she makes the discovery that Principal Weems is a shapeshifter and she must have pretended to be the obviously dead Rowan. Episode 6. Enid throws Wednesday a surprise party. Even Fing is wearing a party hat. Did they glue it onto him? Wednesday had a vision on her birthday of a house. When she finds the house, she notices the mayor leaving the building. So she follows him. He then gets hit by a car on his way to tell the sheriff something. Wednesday convinces Enid and Tyler to go to the creepy house. Once in the house, they split up. Because you know, that never ends badly for anyone. Merely moments later, Tyler gets attacked. Who would have guessed? Have they never watched Scooby Doo before? You don't split up. After almost getting all of her friends killed, they're kind of mad at her. Episode 7. Wednesday gets home and her room is trash. And Fing, you might, you might want to sit down for this. Fing has been stabbed and is bleeding to death. How does someone murder a severed hand? Poor Fing. I was tearing up. I was concerned. After all of Wednesday's investigating, she has found out the monster she's looking for is a hide. And a hide is controlled by someone. So she's looking for two people. She thinks one of them is her therapist. And then she gets killed. So probably not the therapist. And she thinks the hide is Xavier. So she gets him sent to jail. Episode 8. An epic battle happens. Wednesday wins. Hurrah. Oh, and she has a stalker now. Now, and they all lived happily ever after. Moving on. I have a few thoughts about the whole series. This season is eight episodes long. I have recently begun to get annoyed at this format they've been doing for TV shows recently. Normally, eight episodes is not enough to make you both care about the characters and to have a decent plot. But Wednesday was pretty good at both. I cared about the new characters such as Enid and Eugene. Thing did capture my heart. What a little king. For season two, I would like to know more about the lore of the show. I want to know how human history has been affected with the presence of supernatural beings. I want to know how werewolves were affected during the fire of London. What did they do? And if I ever see this man, I'm fighting him. Because he knew the entire time that his half outcast child could have been the monster and he did nothing. He could have saved so many lives. The job is literally to protect people. How are you messing that up? Overall, I enjoyed the show and I shall be watching season two, which they alluded to. Bye.